Hey, champions, today we're diving into a topic that affects not only the United States, but also the entire global economy. It's time to talk about China and its default on sovereign debt. Buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. Now, we all know that paying our debts is a fundamental part of responsible financial management, right? But what if I told you that one of the world's largest economies, China, has been defaulting on its sovereign debt obligations? It's like someone who owes you money, but they conveniently forget about it. Not cool, China. Not cool. Let's go back in time to get a clearer picture of how this mess started. Before 1949, the Republic of China issued gold-denominated bonds, using them to build infrastructure and finance its activities. These bonds were like the backbone of the China we know today. But then, things took a turn for the worse. During the ROC's conflict with Japan in 1938, they defaulted on their sovereign debt. Ouch! Talk about a financial blow during a difficult time. After the communists took over, the ROC government fled to Taiwan and the People's Republic of China became the recognized successor government. According to international law, this means that the current Chinese government is responsible for repaying those defaulted bonds. Enter the American Bondholders Foundation, a group of American citizens who hold a massive quantity of these gold-denominated bonds. They act as trustees for over 20,000 bondholders whose bonds are worth a staggering dollar, one trillion plus. Here's where it gets interesting. Remember the Iron Lady herself, Margaret Thatcher? She had some serious negotiations with China over the return of Hong Kong to Chinese control. She made it clear that if China wanted access to the UK's capital markets, they had to honor their defaulted Chinese sovereign debt held by British subjects. China had no choice but to agree. Sadly, the United States didn't follow suit. China has had access to the U.S. capital markets for years while openly rejecting its sovereign debt obligations to American bondholders. Seriously, why did we let this slide? We need to take a common sense stance, just like the U.K. did in 1987. Don't think these bonds are ancient history. Germany made its last payment for reparations from World War I as recently as 2010, and even Great Britain made payments on bonds from the 18th century in 2015. These countries understood the importance of honoring their debts. It's about time the United States takes a stand too. Champions, now we have a unique opportunity to enforce this international rule that governments must honor their debts. It's a matter of national security and financial stability. So what can we do about it? Let's explore two potential solutions that are being discussed by members of Congress. Solution number one, the U.S. could acquire the Chinese bonds held by the American Bondholders Foundation and use them to offset a significant portion of the over $850 billion in U.S. Treasuries owned by China. This would not only reduce the daily interest paid to China, but also lower the national debt and strengthen the U.S. financially on the global stage. Solution number two, Congress could pass legislation that holds China accountable for abiding by international norms and rules of finance, trade, and commerce. This means China would have to play fair and adhere to transparency rules in capital markets and exchanges. No more exclusionary settlements, discriminatory payments, or selective defaults. And if China fails to meet these obligations, it would be barred, along with its state-controlled entities, from accessing U.S. dollar-denominated bond markets and exchanges. It's just common sense, right? We're not asking for anything outrageous. We're simply demanding fairness and justice. And guess what? China would do the same if the tables were turned. It's time for the U.S. to step up and take action. Over the past two decades, there has been recurrent bipartisan support in Congress for addressing China's default on sovereign debt. Several resolutions have been proposed, showing a shared concern among lawmakers. But despite this support, successive U.S. administrations have remained silent on the issue, hoping that China would eventually embrace Western norms and values. Well, that strategy clearly hasn't worked. Now, champions, we have a golden opportunity to break this cycle of inaction. With the deteriorating relations between the U.S. and China and a bipartisan agreement on the threat China poses, we finally have the chance to tackle this issue head on. It's not only about doing what's right and just for the bondholders, but it could also be a massive win for the U.S. taxpayer if handled correctly. 
So here's the deal, champions. We need to make some noise. We need to rally behind this cause and encourage our representatives in Congress and the Biden administration to take a firm stand against China's default on sovereign debt. Let's show China that we won't back down and we expect them to honor their obligations just like any responsible country should. That's all for today's episode, champions. I hope you found this topic as intriguing as I did. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories that matter. Stay informed, stay engaged, and together, let's make a difference. Until next time, take care and keep fighting for what's right. Remember, champions, the world is watching. It's time to stand up for justice and hold countries accountable for their debts. Let's make a difference together.